Hello and welcome to another randomised gaming video. Uh, this is another gameplay one. Now, usually I don't commentate on them, so don't worry, I'm not going to spend too much long commenting, but I just actually want to give you a quick overview of some of the menu interface for this game. Because this is your Kuro Q part, Kuro Q64 2 part, part of the second one. But uh, basically, this was never released in English, so there are a few interesting uh, menus you need to be aware of when playing. So I just want to explain some of the systems. Actually, it's not a bad game, it's got its flaws, but as you can see here, I'm actually renaming the car I've uh, chosen for um, with an English, because it does support English characters. And that says 5 of 7. Basically, you have a customization option and you can customize your vehicle, change the color, etc. And basically, you find parts by winning races. However, you can only customise up to the class. Now, currently in class C, and the max point is 07. You'll also notice I just equipped a weapon there, which is that little thing at the bottom, so that's raised my score up to 6 points. So I could equip a few other parts, which I don't have at the minute, but if you can't exceed anything more than the current class, it's, it's, I mean, it's fairly straightforward. The menus take a little bit working around because it's quite heavy. This one's usually N64 games are fairly easy, unless they're uh, RPGs, but this one has slightly more heavy. Um, Menu. So, just take a minute, I'm actually just going through arcade mode. So, I was going to do the Grand Prix, and this is, you get three races and a three set Grand Prix. And if you win a Grand Prix, you get to pick one item from selection. Basically, you, you win components. So, you start off with no equipment, and basically, as you see here, the, the selection menu there, you can get to alter your car before you start. Basically, if you win a Grand if you win all three races, and Grand Prix, you get to pick one part. If you win a single race, you don't get to pick a part, you get to steal a part from an opponent, or you can give a part to the opponent. Usually I'm a bit mean and steal it from the opponents. But uh, yeah, you can basically, that's how you basically build up an inventory of parts, and the more races you win, you eventually go up classes and better classes, better parts. Now, there is one drive I have in this, I will mention in review, but you'll notice the handling. It does handle a bit like a truck. I noticed that I struggled with it. Admittedly, this is the hardest race in the game, this snow one, but yeah, it's, it's not got the greatest handling. Okay, the other thing I want to just give a quick overview is this game actually has a create your own track, which is a really nice feature. So I'm going to shut up for now and I will speak again at the next. I think I'll give a quick, bit more of an in depth breakdown on the menu system when it appears.
Okay, so you'll notice I have just one single race here. Now, the difference with a single race compared to a Grand Prix is in a Grand Prix at the end you get to pick an award out of three basically given to the player. However, in a single race if you win one, you act instead of being given an award you get to choose from, you get to steal an item from another player. So, I was first, so I get first choice or so of picking the item from either the fourth, fifth or sixth player. So I get to choose and then I get to basically after you choose which part you want, you also get to decide whether you want to give something, swap it or give them nothing. So in my case I stole something and gave him nothing. In the two computer cases they actually gave items to the opposition and didn't take anything. So the computer is surprisingly generous. So this is the menu quickly. So this one I've just clicked on here is save and if you note those characters up in the top they click on again. This is load. This one is the class selection where we see for the speed of the vehicle the class have to be unlocked. So this is the track selection button and you'll notice the R button that will change the width basically the weather effect and whether you want to race the race in reverse as well. So the effect of each track is for varying because it's two weather effects and a, uh, two mirror versions with the various weather effects. So this is the customization. You get to choose your shell, your weapon and the various uh, sort of speed add-ons. So you notice I've currently got a uh, suitcase on top of my car which bizarrely makes me go faster. A few interesting ones like that. So that's customization. Now the top option is basically profile, so you don't really want to select that after you've initially done it because it allows you to change the uh, 
whether it would be best to to raise your character or not if you don't want to keep it. And lastly I should say, this game actually needs, although it has a battery backup or a flash RAM, I'm not entirely sure which one of the two, the, I would assume flash RAM because the later N64 games tend to flash over battery backup, it's the back, the, well, the, fl the flash RAM save is purely for saving your times, it will only be for saving your times nothing else. If you want to save your progress and the parts you've unlocked, you need the uh, control pack that plugs into the joypad. And it's actually 123 bucks, this game, according to the manual, so it's it's a big game, so you have to be aware of that. It's going to be one that you really need a little control pack for solely for this game, because otherwise you cannot save your progress. As I've actually found out myself, because I don't have one at the minute, so basically you can you can play it till you turn it off. But as soon as you turn it off, you lose all your progress without being able to save it. Yet you cannot save without a control pack. So that's another thing to be aware of if you decide to quite like love this game, you want to pick it up. So just coming up now is possibly the most interesting part of the game, and this is actually the create your own track section. So I've gone through and actually built a couple of tracks. Now, first off, you see there, there's uh, 
two types of track for green and yellow slightly different designs and the other one is an open-ended track as a circle or a preset race like a drag strip which is a start finish line so i'm going to put this build a open-ended circle one you know you actually although it's fairly simplistically done and put together this track realization actually you can do some quite nice maps it's simple to use even without any understanding of japanese and it's fairly user friendly primarily because the Kura Q, the actual our toy cars and their design for children. As you can see there, you've got a range of circles for the corners and single straight sections. You've got like the chicane and a few other bits. So I'm just putting a few bits together now quickly. So um, you've got the grey one at the top, there's a bridge. You've got various hills. You've got corners that have got hills on them. You've got sharp corners and you've got more overall curved corners. I can't say I particularly like the sharp corners, so I didn't use them for this track. The other thing you can actually do is raise the elevation and as you just saw there you see those coins you can actually place power ups but you can only place power ups on certain segments. Now the other thing you have to be slightly mindful of next to the part that I'm currently laying you'll see just below it is a number 52 it was it's now 52 it was 58 and it was now it's 48. That appears to be the uh, track limit once you exceed that you can't build a track so you do have to be mindful you can't have some uber long one because it is appears to be saved in sort of internal memory so you can only do so much but it's still nice you can't race the ai but you can race your friends in two player and you can time the track time attack i should say your own course so it's actually quite nicely done it's actually a friendly good fun and just really well put together and something that mario kart didn't have and it's actually something that from mario kart probably could have done with i know f-zero supposedly had it in the dd drive version but of course that was japan only and had an extremely limited release in the end so laid it you've got a three-dimensional view as you can see you actually got quite a few camera actually you can tilt it up and down and move around but what i'm doing here as you can see because i've gone to three dimensional i'm actually raising and lowering the track so you can put hills and bumps in which is a really nice little touch considering that usually it's just like a flat track you can actually raise lower it So for something that's not really a big game, so to speak, it's actually quite, you can do some quite interesting detailed tracks. Yeah, you have limits, but you've got hills, you've got tunnels, you've got chicanes, and you can have it, you can adjust the height of the track. So it's actually pretty nice. As I said, you can race two player and race single player in time attack, but you cannot race CPU cars. So that second option there, I'm just saving it. Now I'm just going to quickly go through here. I think this is the short term save. Again, I didn't have control pack in, so I don't know if you can, I assume you can save your designs. I'm not entirely sure. The game appears to come with a number of tracks pre-built, but don't quote me on that because I believe this was a second hand copy we bought. So I'm not sure whether there are some tracks saved on already on the game by default or whether it's actually pre-built ones. Seeing as you have to say you need a control pack to save i think they're actually pre-built ones by the developers so you can hear this is a little track i was doing and here we go we're going to do a quick time snap around it so you can see there's the tunnel the first tunnel you get the hills you get the turns you know, coming up is the hills yeah these are the hilly sort of turns with the sort of up it and next coming up next just down here is the chicane bit and actually, it's actually quite good fun especially if you can design you and your friend can design a track and then you can race on each other's track and see if you can get the fastest time you can be it's all right it's so i surprised i didn't have more in there you know i don't know if this was included in the original penny races or not although i own the original penny races i've not played one not my particular one of the other guys in the randomized game for people i have played it but i've not played it that much at all so i can't comment on the original game I have, however, played a few of the other Pro or a few games. Some of them did attract building features, some of them didn't. But it actually comes together quite nicely. So, this is the, the huge hill I did at the end. So, we've got the, we've got the sub hill just coming up the bumps. No, so it's the Star Trek. Being lost in my own time. It's actually, I was quite, I was racing around, but actually, it's quite good fun. So, pretty much, I'm going to wrap up the commentary there. That's a quick overview of the track building system and the menu interface. 
what I'm going to do for the remaining 20 minutes or so is we're going to show you the remaining tracks. There are nine tracks by default in the game. I'm not sure if there's any hidden ones. I don't believe there are hidden tracks. If, if you like Pro Cure, if you want fancy something a bit different, this is kind of like a mini version of Gran Turismo with all the tweaking. The ability to tweak, I should say, and mispronounce and tweak in there. But basically, with the, bit, with the sort of under the hood bonnet change, etc., and the classes, this is, does remind me a bit of Gran Turismo. Sure, it, it's nowhere near as detailed and it's primarily aimed at kids, but it's actually quite a nice little package. Um, as I did mention slightly earlier, the handling is a a bit dicey in places, which is a shame. It gets better once you upgrade, but it's not ideal when you first start to play like a brick. But, but you do a few stunt maneuvers, like you're, you may have seen me in the video earlier, just doing a roll. Basically, that's holding the R trigger. Press the R trigger once on its own, it'll do a two. If you press the R trigger and double tap back twice on the stick as you're driving, you'll jump up. If you double tap left or you double tap right, you'll do a 90 degrees sharp turn which on a couple of the tracks I actually found was the only way of getting first. Certainly the snow track, that was the only way because some of the corners, even slowing down trying to turn with the default car, you just can't. The other good thing in this game is it does support four players as well. So it's got quite a few options. I, I'm loathe to draw any Mario Kart comparisons because Mario Kart is its own beast and yeah, that is, I'm not a big fan of the N64 version of Mario Kart. So, I'm Random Gamer River, I'm going to leave you the rest of the game, and I hope you enjoyed this quick overview. And hopefully, if you decide to import the game, this will come in handy if you ever need to figure out what each option is to do. And, if you carry on reading the Random Gaming blog, I should say, and watching our YouTube videos.